welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week, I'm going to talk about portals and gateways and surrender. Oh my. There are many folks confused about their journey or encountering blocks along their path. And now that's common in the shift, but it's tough in the role that, that I'm in right now to witness folks resisting doing something about it. There's a lot of beautiful people out there that are within an arm's reach of freedom, but they delay, procrastinate, resist, and let the ego mind emotions steer them off the path. They might experience flashes of brilliance and connection, love and unity consciousness, followed by days or weeks or longer of why can't I stay in that state all the time? <laughs> uh, as an Ascension Guide, all I can do is continue to provide tools and guidance and build bridges between worlds and assist personally when someone is ready to take on the challenge of freedom. Uh, I know I mentioned this on the radio broadcast last week, the experience of that invisible way shower. And even though many light workers have stalled, quit, or are in the um, waiting for Godot mode, the shift goes on. Way showers are leaving a trail for them to follow whenever they choose. Uh, that trail is is not made out of angel oracle cards, just so you know, <laughs> and and forging ahead. And it's not abandonment. I was having this conversation with a friend yesterday. I'm like, it's not abandonment. It's having the courage to see what is available on this path so we can truly be of service. It's that that quote that I had a, a few months ago of they say nobody goes down that path, but look, somebody's coming back from there. And it's literally that's what we're doing. We're forging ahead and leaving you know, the, the teachings or the information or the knowledge that we have to share uh, in, in nice little packages for people to find and then uh, going ahead and plowing ahead with what's available. Because as we come upon this gateway from equinox to equinox, it, uh, there, there is a lot of possibility out there. There is a lot of possibility presenting and bizarre things start to, to start to happen to way showers and uh, it's it's the week before September. I mean, it's the end of August in 2012 and here we are, it is upon us. So there is no waiting around for people to, to catch up at all. And there's 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 a, a couple of gals, some some sisters, that uh, that I highly respect. That are actually I'm actually in the middle of the two of them, which is kind of odd. So I am I am halfway between uh, Lucia Renee and Anelia Benz right now, because <laughs> uh, Lucia is up in in Ashland, Oregon, and uh, and uh, Anelia is down in Sacramento, and I'm of course in Shasta. So it's always interesting when, uh, like a couple weeks ago, I was talking about the the gateway. I see equinox to equinox, this gateway. And then last week, I was like, where is where is everybody? How come everyone is is dropping off the mat and is, uh, off the map and is just exhausted or just kind of thrown in the towel or just stepping back? And sure enough, um, both uh, both Lucia and Anelia came out just this weekend and said. I'm sensing there's a gateway from equinox to equinox, and and Anelia was kind of uh, going off in a very loving way. Um, why are light workers retiring? What's going on? This is game time, and and I said this too on on uh, Saturday. I did I settled in for some grid work, and and started working, and I'm like, where is everybody? What, what's going on here? I'm like. Is everyone like on vacation? What's going on? You know, it's the end of August. Okay, people are busy, but where's where's the priority? It seems like a lot of people are just kind of dropping off, getting lazy, getting exhausted, whatever. Um, it's we're we're not done yet. Just just so you know, I I don't know if if people were you know people need the the thrill of of 
something bad <laughs> happening or what, or, or something like crazy happening. But uh, there was kind of like this this lull after um, the the light ships didn't land during the Olympics, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, I don't know, I don't know what's the truth anymore." And instead of looking within um, and and just you know sticking to the light worker path, they just kind of dropped out. You know, they're just like laying low for a while. Um, time to you know get back on the horse, y'all. So let's get into that, please. Now, when it comes to mastery of this expression, a new level of surrender presents which can be intimidating. I'm not talking about surrendering to to the past, the kind of things that happen early on in in your your spiritual path or your ascension path. I'm talking about there's a there's a new thing here. The initiate, well, new new to this this process, I should say, because this has happened many times before. When it comes to mastery of of this expression, a new level presents which can be a little scary. The initiate, who is a person who has done the work, released the illusion, given up the lower constructs in order to pursue the the higher truth within, they're faced with a point of no return moment when a final surrender is necessary to attain higher states of consciousness. Every master has gone through this test of commitment, that last step into the unknown, where there is just complete surrender. My option for my option for this upgrade presented this week, along with the test of surrendering to it. The unknown consciousness of the vast multidimensional self that black hole within our existence waiting to implode into evolution is a disquieting thing to face. And if you think it sounds exciting, you haven't been there yet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like, oh, goody, I get to, you know, tur- turn into something completely unknown. It's, it's intimidating. Surrendering to mastery is 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 a difficult choice not to be taken lightly. This step presents the initiate with the vastness of the unknown, surrendering to the unknown self. The unknown journey is an intimate act of trust prior to complete transformation. Complete surrender of all levels, layers, and dimensions of the self shatters the old reality and releases the illusion of identity altogether. The initiate is confronted with the possibility of never being able to reconnect to the illusion of the past or engaging with the illusion of separation any longer. And that brings up all kinds of questions when you're faced with this decision. Who am I going to be? when my true self is revealed, because we can only go so far when we're still connected to the external in a very uh, interactive way. Day-to-day life, day-to-day responsibility, moment-to-moment tasks and and ideas and creations and everything. You, You don't know who you're going to be when that last veil is lifted and your true self, your your higher self, says, okay, here's what we're going to do now. A point of no return means just that. It's not possible to wear the masks anymore or hide your full expression or dim down when society or culture wants to crush your light out of fear or you have some kind of obligation to uh, a, an event or a presentation or family or friends or whatever, when you make this step, there is no more. There, there is no more um, accommodating in a in a dimming down kind of way. Uh, the external. You won't be concerned with that. That uh, reception of of how you're going to look or how you're going to be received once you make the transition but because you become that unknown and that 
can be very um, that can be resisted by by people or society or culture that uh, it, you're you're unrecognizable to them or they they just can't accept that. Now you won't be concerned with that after the transition, but what does that true self look like or, or feel like, sound like? Your journey may be completely transformed. Missions may become very challenging because you're not going to say no, you're in pure service. I still have the the choice right now, it's still existing with a body on a planet that's still experiencing some duality of getting uh, getting the nudge, getting the, the instruction, having the little meeting with the higher self. The higher self is saying, set up the series, go ahead and do it. And and, and, and me saying, well, what, what if I don't want to? You know, well, I, I don't really have to do that. And getting like this, this push in the back going, yes, you are. So it's, your journey may become a little challenging and your consciousness will shatter with the illusion of density into something unrecognizable. When the conscious choice of surrender is made, decided upon, the initiate, the initiate is that the candidate for mastery, chooses a private place where they won't be disturbed or inhibited by the external. You go into a deep state of meditation and as your consciousness expands, it merges and integrates whatever has been selected by the soul's pure intention for your path. Then the initiate's reality is rewritten in divine codes, light intelligence, purity of expression, service, universal will, highest intent, and that pure expression of source as self comes forth. The entirety of the past illusion is destroyed. And you can see this, this metaphor of revelation, the destruction of the illusions through the power of divinity. Past completely wiped away. Divinity takes over. Crystalline consciousness, Christ consciousness, unity consciousness, full embodiment of that. But you do have to go through this step of Surrender and surrender isn't about waiting for something to happen. This gets presented to you like, do you want to do this? Because here we are, and here's the gateway, and you know, do you want to do this? And it's a matter of of commitment. And not only that, it's just it's not a mental level saying, yeah, I'm committed. Go ahead, you know, let's show me what's up. It's a matter of of honoring that and really respecting that that infiltration of your consciousness with the divine self with the with the true divine you that higher self the soul level now the divine gateway the moment we've all been anticipating here we are occurs from fall equinox through spring equinox that's september 21st through march 23rd 2013 with a big metaphor of resurrection planted right in the middle of it. Well, December 21st, 2012, is a, has a huge amount of collective energy amplifying it. The 12-12-12, that triple-digit portal, is a divine initiation of what Archangel Michael calls the birthing canal. Anyone who has participated in any of the last 12 years' worth of triple date activations, 111, 222, uh, all of this all the way through the 111, 11, understands the power that's within those markers. Each triple date provided a unique activation for Gaia and humanity, whether you were participating or not. And this last one is a preparation for the 12. 2112. Personally, I enjoy how this metaphor has unfolded. I have a deep appreciation for how how cool and poetic uh, this this last wow two two hundred thousand years has been here with these these um, this continual metaphor, all the symbols and the predictions pointing to humanity over and over again. 
the Quetzalcoatl, the Unmasked Kachina, the Return of the Christ. It's all about us. I know I say that a lot, but here's, here, here's the thing. The winter solstice gets a special mention thanks to its use in so many ancient legends. The reference to sun gods in different world cultures, wow, Horus, Addis, Krishna, Yeshua, Dionysus, Mithra, Horus, Odin, and many others follow similar patterns. And this is in all different cultures, different different time periods all over the globe. Typical structure is born of a virgin on December 25th, signaled by a star in the east, adored by three kings that followed the star. They usually have 12 disciples. They work miracles. They're called Lamb of God, Son of God, King of Kings, the Light. They die, many by crucifixion, and rise again after three days after being dead and buried, put in a tomb, etc., for three days. In late December, th- this is what happens astrologically every year. In late December, the Star of the East is Sirius on December 24th. On December 24th, it aligns with the three stars of Orion's belt, which are also referred to as the Three Kings. The, the, so Sirius and the three stars uh, of Orion's belt on December 25th, they point to where the sun rises after the winter solstice. So, so what you're getting is you're, you're getting the, the star of the east, December 24th, aligns with the three kings on the 25th. And then they all, all four of these stars point to where exactly where the sun rises after the winter solstice. The three kings follow the eastern star to the birth of the sun. This is the metaphor. The twelves in the stories are the zodiac signs. Pretty easy to figure out. And we find that in ancient wisdom and art all the time. Twelve plus the one. Twelve flowing into one. The cross and the, and the circle symbol as well for the zodiac, ancient pagan symbol, the zodiac and the sun. That's why you see those those paintings of Yeshua and, and other um, masters with the halo that has the cross inside. It's a pagan symbol for the zodiac, the sun in the center of the twelve, sun in the center of the zodiac. And all of these all of these symbols and the and the, the twelve plus the, the one and and Orion have showed up in really, really ancient pottery and sculpture and art that they have found that that dates way back. I mean, we're talking before uh, this is like 24,000 years ago was the oldest one that they found, and it was you know these 12 cups that pour into one larger chalice that has Orion on the side of it, and when you pour the the water from the twelve cups into the one it fills it perfectly. They all have Orion on it. You've got all these 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 little statues of of, of beings looking up, and it's got Orion and, and Sirius there. So this has been going on for a while. The winter solstice is the darkest, shortest day when the sun is moving south, and then it dies to its lowest point on December twenty second. And the sun appears to stop moving on the horizon. When it rises, it, it's just coming up in the same place. It looks like it, it just died, like something happened, no, no more time. And it resides near the Southern Cross, which is also referred to as the Crux constellation, crucifixion, there you, are, there you are, on the cross. And it comes up in the same place for three days. Then it begun, begins to move north again. It's resurrected, comes back to life. Sun comes back to life. This is where the three days of darkness predictions come from, using the same metaphor, the rewrite of death into resurrection during the solstice. Now, as we take on our journeys as metaphoric sun gods and that Pleiadian concept of new dawn and all the other metaphors for reigniting the true human expression, 
during this this alignment and and yes it's the end of the the 26,000 year cycle but they, we also have five other galactic and universal cycles ending at the same time during December. It's not just about one cycle. It's not just about this repetitive thing. This is many cycles ending. And if you want to know the, the details on that, just go to my website. But this is where the three days of darkness comes in, that rewrite of resurrection during the solstice, all of this new dawn, the the rising, the return of the Christ, we ascend our consciousness to unify with our divine aspect. The return of unity consciousness, crystalline consciousness, or the return of the Christ, it is all of us who are returning to our true state, some collectively during this gateway, some in December itself, and some later on down the road. Obviously, we, we don't have a 100% awakened population on the planet right now. Will it be all of humanity? I honestly doubt that that will occur. I do think our realities are going to get very fragmented on this planet for a while as the gap between thought and manifestation uh, narrows. And those stepping into their self-as-source state of consciousness with pure intentions for creating a reality in the highest interest of all concerned because there is no more my my concerns versus your concerns. Duality is dead. As we move into highest interest of all concern, your intentions get manifested when they are if you're if you're stepping into that state of selfless source with those pure intentions, highest good of all concerned, acting out of service, connected to your true Self, you'll be able to experience a higher dimension of reality. I know that's kind of a bold statement, but stay with me. Whether or not we'll be able to, whether or not we're going to be able to sit at a table together, I was talking about this last night with a friend, you know, those asleep in, in the 3D loop sitting alongside an ascended human of higher frequency, I don't know how, if if that is going to be supported, if it's just going to be weird for a while, where we have people who step into this crystalline consciousness state, welcome that in, embody it, and then how how is that going to appear to those still in density? Or when we go through this gateway, is there going to be enough of a shift? Is collective humanity going to get on board uh, by by December and at least be open to something changing and not still trying to battle each other or create enemies or fight back or not change at all? If collective humanity can get on board by by December, there may be an opportunity for for less splintering of the reality where you don't get people who are really stuck in in the 3D loop you know get to experience that reality and then we've got a layer of low 40 and then you've got a mid layer of of 40 and then you've got a high 40 and you got some people that are embracing 5D but bringing it right down into the 40 there's there's a lot of of different expressions of gaia it appears that many parallel expressions of Gaia are being manifested by collective interpretations of the shift. Different camps of people deciding on what their reality is or believing someone else's reality, and 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 they create that. So when you get into a, a time collapse where the the delay between your thoughts and what manifests in the world becomes very narrow, you have entire groups of people creating realities based on on collective thought rather than their individual expression. So perhaps they get to experience that. A 3D Earth, the, the same as it ever was, a, a 3D Earth that's going to explode. Go ahead, ride that right off the cliff. A, a 4D Earth where we're we're getting into 
taking care of the planet and, and rebuilding it and cleaning it up, all of these different expressions and collective agreements may create all these different realities. How much of each other, how much of each other's reality we get to experience, we don't know yet. It could get very interesting. Even the Ascension timeline holds different possibilities as it honors collective intention. It's the thought that counts. And it is a personal responsibility to create exactly what you desire for yourself, for humanity, this planet, and beyond. And crystalline consciousness is the quantum leap that we've been dreaming of, but it has its challenges and preparations must be made. You are your own John the Baptist in this situation when it comes to choosing to prepare for your own arrival. You are preparing for nothing but you and the rest of humanity and the planet to come on, to step up, come on in, and you are literally um, resurrecting yourself. That's what ascension is is about. It's about getting out of that density. It's about re- freeing yourself from the illusion and embracing the possibility of what is available. And when I take a look or when I have those conversations uh, up on the mountain, I'm I, I'm being shown like all these in- incredible things that humanity is capable of not just on this planet, but as we go out into the the galaxy and the universe as as beings that went through this process, uh, we we do get to uh, experience everything. You know, it, it's limitless and it's it's really incredible. And that may be shown to me as as something that's way down the road, or it may be you know December twenty fifth. Who knows? Uh, the, now, the, the technicalities of, of portals is something that I promised to talk about, uh, but this is a just a brief overview of material that I'm going to be sharing in September in my advanced um, series of webinars. I had a floodgate of intel open this week, and I want to sort out details in this deluge of information before um before I go and state anything as uh as I, I want to understand it I always want to understand something and experience it before I can go out and and say yeah this is this is how it is and again this is my expression if you don't resonate with it that's fine but I just want to give a brief overview of this this kind of this uh I was describing it last night as like a a big package of of information came in a couple of weeks ago and I was I was working you know working on the webinar and and such and I kind of put it off and and was just sneaking you know sneaking a peek in the box every once in a while going what what's in there what's in there well I I opened it on Tuesday and uh Monday night Tuesday morning and I was wow okay so it's a lot of information but it's kind of like just way too much like way too much um light <laughs> around it so i'm i'm just going to briefly uh state what what i've got so far so the vesca pisces uh has presented in my personal life over and over again when i was shown my own ascension in uh 2010 beginning of 2011 I I don't remember sorry every the past is just going squish I can't, I can't even like focus on it anymore uh when I was shown my own ascension it was via the Vesca Pisces and for for those who who haven't been reading me the the Vesca Pisces I I have a a, a circle of of mystic sisters and we get together and we just hold space we're all on the phone so that we can, you know, communicate in in this realm and others. We're all on the phone. We get together, and we we say, okay, let's just see what happens. We we set maybe a little intention sometimes. Sometimes we don't. And I I wanted to know what is what is my ascension going to look like. And I think at that point it was a, a couple of years ago. 
that I, I had no idea. I had no idea how the, how this is all going down, what the possibilities were, anything like that. It was still more theory than um, something that had been like pulled right into my realm. And the the you know my 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 gals held space for me, and I just asked the question. And the the Vesca Pisces presented, which means not just the not just the, uh, the the fish part, but the whole all the circles. So these these two circles, you know, with the, with the the intertwine at the halfway point for bo- both circles, and it's the the base of of all I think all sacred geometry. I don't want to say everything, but I think it is the the base for all sacred geometry is in the Vesca Pisces. So this presents. And there's all these these star brethren, which I did not know all of them at that time. I only knew the Arcturians and the Syrians and the Pleiadians at that time. And but there were other other beings and races around there. But they're all just kind of standing around it, like hanging out at the gate, you know, kind of like come come you know stand over here, kind of thing. And I just moved into it with my consciousness. And it wasn't even a matter of walking through; it was just moving into that, and then it, I was I was here and there. It was just seamless, flawless expansion of this dimension that dimension, and then realized, oh, I, I'm just I'm already there, and that was that was a, a bit of a, a, a wake up for me too to to think that it was not just uh, traveling somewhere. It wasn't like astral travel, and I, I, I teach that now. Expansion of consciousness, expansion of your the particles of your beingness out to a higher frequency. So it's like, I, I compare it to Russian dolls, the little nesting dolls. You're like the tiny doll in the middle, and then you expand out to the next size up, the next size up, etc. But it's all it's all still part of the one, you're still all the same expression. You're just experiencing all these different dimensions on uh, on different frequencies, and it's just where you want to tune in, where you can uh, concentrate on on what's going on. So that presented when I was shown my own ascension, it was there. When I'm asked to open portals on the mountain, it's there. Draw the Vesca Pisces. Okay, you know, I have no idea why. I was like, okay, okay, keep doing it, keep doing it. When I study sacred geometry, it's at, it, again, it's at the root of of everything that I'm finding. The Isis, Osiris, Magdalena, Yeshua, dark light expressions of duality, surrendering and collapsing into unity consciousness are beautiful to me. The shift event, this divine ascension we're going through, utilizes this integration, although we don't have to search and find that one perfect complement anymore. We are out of the the yin yang thing. We're we're moving into triality. Duality technically doesn't exist anymore. Duality is is gone, and triality is signaling the trinitized beingness that you truly are, spirit, soul, form, to reunite. So activation of unity consciousness can occur without a partner in, in the same dimension now. And we're, but we're utilizing this this integration, this this these two circles where they intersect. This is no longer you and something else. This is you and you. And if you've studied sacred geometry within the Vesca Pisces, is where you get that that octahedron. You get the diamond shape. All these different seed of life, flower of life. It's the tube torus. It keeps unfolding into all that is, and it, it's pretty fascinating if you're a total ascension geek like I am. Now, m- magnetics, when it comes to the the magnetics that used to be involved with Isis and Osiris, Magdalena, Yeshua, even dark and light, when they want to turn into something else, turn into a higher state of, of beingness and become that triality, unified, there's there's magnetics involved and, and there's a, a fascinating book about um, Magdalena's journey that uh, Tom Kenyon co-authored but they can be magnetics can be tricky to work with so it's best to get familiar with the sensations of activation of that magnetic that is you this is not about finding your your perfect other 
half anymore. People who are having that experience, that's wonderful. You know, perhaps they perhaps they need it. You know, they need the the illusion of something out, outside of themselves to complete them or whatever. And and it's beautiful. You know, it, it's there's nothing wrong with it. Fifth dimensional consciousness can can feel it feels like an orgasm. <laughs> and and I know there's been been races who describe it that way. I think the Pleiadians described it that way. But it it feels similar to the the bliskasm you get when you when you get those that kundalini explosion upward and the it blast activates those higher fifth dimensional six dimensional chakras. Um, I had this experience on the ten 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 and I never turned back. It was incredible. It just shoots through you and it's it's not the state of consciousness where you're like, oh, I just experienced myself as God or I felt like I was the universe. This is very physical. This is magnetics. It it pulses through your whole being, and and it, it opens up everything as it as it moves through. And for a a human who may have not had not had that experience before, it's it, it's a bit mind blowing. So when you get this this kundalini explosion and this activation of these higher chakra systems because we're not just focusing on the seven anymore it uh it it feels very similar to the 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 sensation of the fifth dimension when you do those travels to the, that fifth dimensional expression of gaia it it feels Blissy but energized. It feels complete. It feels like like knowing. It's wisdom. It's not associated with with sex at all. You know, I mean that's and that's that pure tantra that that Magdalena and and Yeshua were working on and Isis and Osiris and everything. It's it's about a, a magnetic connection that creates unity. So as you as you go through this this journey, recognize when a member of your soul group is showing up to activate that unity within you. We have some beautiful ancient contracts playing out right now, and you can recognize the divinity of that love and honor it. Now the Essenes were very aware of these these crossed paths that held activation that and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that that instant attraction it's like oh my god what what is this 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 person crosses your path and you're you're just instantly like whoa what what is that i have no idea what that is and you know depending on on where you are in your journey um you can interpret it as many different things you know it feels like a a, a crush or an obsession or your but you're misinterpreting it as as just like sexual attraction or something. But as we as we step into this mastery path, people show up that hold keys to that magnetic. Well, it doesn't mean that you have to like go into some big you know tantric journey with them <laughs> at all. It's it's just a, a merely um, and that the 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 magnetic that is at work there is is different than it was back in the day when when you know in in India when the when the Syrians and the and uh, the the Essenes and everything were exploring how to get you know a, out of the illusion via sacred sex via via tantra via all these different methods within the body and now that we're in the shift in consciousness and the frequency is much higher um, we don't have to do that anymore. You're welcome to explore it. it. Can be a lot of fun, but the but the the keys to those magnetics they're just it's it's uh, it's similar to to a mirror where you're you're literally giving yourself that key if if you allow it to to activate some part of you. That doesn't mean that it's one person handing you the key. It can be several, and I've encountered a, a couple in in the last couple of months that and it's beautiful I'm like oh that's what that is just realize what was going on and the and the Essenes were very aware of when when these people showed up in your life 
those sensations, that that instant feeling of whoa, I wow, what is that feeling? Because it does it does activate something within you, and because it's um, activating a, a high level of unconditional love, of unity consciousness, of of light, a very high light frequency, uh, it can it feels amazing and the, the love is there and it's instant and everything or it can be misinterpreted for, for something else like something sexual or something that's that's uh, you know related to density but if you're on the path you're like oh okay now now I get it and and the Essenes described that instant att- attraction as a, a person who reminds you of something you thought you had lost well that's the way they described it you know back in the day and now we're seeing that that is that is indeed um, they're they're actually carrying something that you thought you had lost. And that doesn't mean they have to do anything for you. It just means when when that presents now, you can take a look at it and go, oh, okay. Am am I willing to welcome that in? Because it's a part of yourself that you yourself are activating. The other person isn't going to activate. It's you know you don't have to approach the person or, or do anything like that unless you want to. But it's it's just a matter of connecting and you're like, oh, thank you. Okay, I got it. And it's just these, the, you know, soul groups are very large. So we have some of, the, some of these contracts set up, much like when you do emotional clearing. You know, if you clear something, then the, the people to remind you of the same lesson don't have to do that anymore. If you're moving into mastery, you're ready for the the agreement on the soul level going up oh, okay she she's there he's there you're there okay it's it's time we're just going to cross paths and we'll see what happens and see if they pick up on it or not see what they do with it you know because this is all about the challenges of mastery along this path so when when someone crosses your path or reminds you of something you had lost they're actually reminding you of something within and during the shift, soul contracts pop up everywhere to tidy up these things prior to ascension. And some of them include this kind of activation. So feel into it and recognize what it is bringing up within you. Don't focus on the external. Go within and go, what is this showing me? What is this signaling? What is this activating? And how you engage with it is your is your own choice. But it, you don't have to, there's nothing to figure out here. It's just a matter of saying, yes, thank you, okay. The way it makes you feel, you might want to overthink or interpret as something else. Or if you're, if you're on the path and you're ready for mastery, you're going to be like, mm-hmm, okay, it is what it is. Okay, thank you, thank you. It feels great, thank you. And that's, that, that could be the end of it. You know, it doesn't have to be anything else. But you can recognize it. You can feel into it, see what it's bringing up, see what what it's it's signaling or activating within you, and just say thank you. Just let it let it be, let it activate, and and see if you can complete those those magnetics that are needed within your own beingness to 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 level up, to go to the next level. Now, internal portals are activated through the heart center. High hearts, there's new telepathic telepathic centers that have been opening since June. And those internal portals, uh, I, I don't know if I should describe them or not, but they it, it feels like um, a big energetic balloon that that comes out of your high heart and it's just in its frequency you know it it just kind of surrounds you in this this bubble of of an energetic that feels like it's it's um sentient like connected to the universe and the 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 moment you get one open then another one presents another and it's just expansion it's just another level of this expansion of consciousness and the telepathic centers start to get very stimulated that's where you're getting that that flash of light that is near the the third eye visions. You know, it looks like a sunspot because that's that new chakra opening up right by the pineal. That's the 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 uh, thalamus gland starting to activate, and it's just related to tele telepathic communication. You don't have to worry about those details right now. 
Along with that, micro wormholes in the mitochondrial DNA, which I've talked about before, are opening to receive the energetics available during the equinox to equinox gateway. This is something you can command in your mastery to open. Go ahead and do it if you're welcome to it. Stargates are another factor altogether, but for the moment, just know that that Solaris, our sun, our solar system's stargate, is going quadrupolar as part of this as part of its own evolution, and in order to serve our evolution. And this may tie together the 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 sun god material, more opportunities available for every single incarnate here. More available. Uh, external portals have presented in the physical for me only once. I do see you know, energetic gateways and things like that, but when it comes to anything related to, to geometry or that looked like a gateway that wasn't um, that wasn't just like, you know, vibrating, sparkly, whatever. Uh, external portals, uh, well, a giant vesica Pisces appeared on the beach last December when I was in uh, South Carolina, and nobody else saw it. But it dissolved. I mean, it was huge. I mean, it was just like 30, 40 feet tall. I mean, giant circles. And just started started appearing. And I was on the balcony of, of my hotel room <laughs> looking at the beach. And all of a sudden, this thing starts starts appearing. And I was like, oh, my God, it's an external portal. You know, so I, I was like, oh, my God, it's a portal. So I I, you know, went downstairs. I went to the beach. And by the time I walked up to it, it dissolved. I mean, like 20 feet away from it, and it just goes... And uh, by the time I, I got close to it, and then I I sensed that it was for something coming in rather than my departure, obviously not meant for me because it dissolved, but um, but it seemed to me that it was, it was for... for something stepping in. I have no idea what that was. Still don't. And actually never explored that. I'm like, I, I don't think that's any of my business. <laughs> so, okay, left it alone. Now, this this is a, a quite a complex subject. So, that's why I'm I'm taking this material and I'm going to be making a part making a part of my advanced ascension webinar series in September. And I'm really I'm really looking forward to to sharing that because this the, the material that I've received this month is is wild. <laughs> it's pretty wild, and and my experiences this month and everything have been has been very potent. So if you if you would like information about that, um, go to my website sandrawalter.com and sign up for the newsletter, and then you'll you'll get the update on on when that's going to be available. Now last Sunday, I presented an emotional clearing webinar. It went great. Thank you to everybody who joined me for the live presentation. The two-hour replay is now available. Um, if you registered prior to the event, go ahead and watch the replay. If you miss the event altogether, you can register for the replay and watch it as if you were there. Um, this one was loaded with clearing information which is the key to, to leveling up. Um, I, I know I've talked about the glass ceiling on the ascension process or s spiritual journey. So if you've hit the glass ceiling or you feel blocked in your process, give it a look. I, I worked with a client yesterday with with this uh, with this clearing material, and it was it's transformative. You know, it's fantastic, and I I do wish. On, on a different level, I do wish that everybody on the planet could experience um, that perspective, at least, if not the clearing itself. So, um, so give it a look if you if you are so guided to do so. Um, this is going to be my last radio show for a while, and I know I talked about this the last couple of weeks, but in order to complete the 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 two series of webinars that, that I am being told I'm responsible for. <laughs> uh, 
it's going to take a lot of work. Um, I do need a, a thesis for WordPress Pro, if anybody knows anyone, or a suggestion for a cross-platform friendly video e-course tool. That would be um, highly, highly helpful. And, and of course, somebody to, tr to write transcripts for the, for the previous radio broadcast would be fantastic. Um, just throwing it out there if anybody has free time, friends, referrals, connections, anything like that, I welcome your assistance with that. Um, as as far as the radio show goes, though, we're 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 gonna take five. Um, next Wednesday is my birthday. For the last two weeks, I've encountered way too many synchronicities about my related to my birthday that have been very bizarre. And then, uh, day before yesterday, was was given the choice to enter this surrender uh, phase of mastery and of course I of course I want to do it I, I but I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what's going to happen if I if I go into that state if uh, I don't know how the other stuff gets done I'm, I'm just kind of throwing my hands up going okay I don't know so I'm going to spend some time with that uh, during my birthday. I'm going to make it a very special birthday. Um, my birthday tradition is to take my photograph at sunrise, and I have years of that. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of fun, and uh, I'm holding up very well. <laughs> but it's, uh, that, it's fun that I get to do it on Mount Shasta this year. But I'm going to spend some time on the, the mountain on my birthday, and, and however long it, it takes to take a peek at the surrender thing and see see what occurs. I don't know, just take taking the, the step off the cliff. I, I don't know what's there. So it, it, it might get interesting. Um, I've been very focused on on metaphor and poetry lately and a lot of a lot of my um, messages and a lot of my writing, have been leaning in that direction, and uh, apologies if if uh, you know if I surrender to this and I end up being just the the ascension poet. <laughs> I apologize. It's uh it, it's all good though. You know we've we've got plenty of other good teachers around there to uh, to help you out with your journey. In the meantime, uh, I am Sandra Walter, and I'm at sandrawalter.com. And I do private sessions. The webinar is available if you want to watch it about emotional clearing. There's another webinar available, uh, a, a replay of the Merging with the Higher Self material. If you missed the Venus Transit webinar and you want to take a peek at that, uh, go ahead and send me an email. I don't have that posted anywhere right now. And that's it. I love you all so very, very much. It has been an honor and a pleasure sharing time with you on Blog Talk Radio and on Ascension Integration. And uh, and I'm hoping that I can continue to share in the near future uh, in this way because I do enjoy it. It's a lot of work, but, you know, I enjoy it. It's cool. And in the meantime, I wish you all a beautiful and creative journey. <laughs> This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com.